Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial for Clara's theme by Tommy Emanuel. Now, before I continue, I've had a few requests and one of them was when is there a Patreon site coming with tablature and all sorts of other stuff. Well, it's here now. If you check down in the description, there is a link to my Patreon site. All the tablature of every single tutorial I have done, including my own arrangement, is now online. There will also be loads of early access. I'm still working a day job. Uh, that means that I have to bundle all my recordings in the weekend or during holiday uh, periods. That means that I all, always work in short bursts trying to make two, three or four tutorials at a time. Whenever they are ready, they will appear on the Patreon site first and then they will be released with weekly intervals on YouTube as well. So. If you want to support the channel or if you need some extra uh, stuff like tablatures and then just go and head over to the Patreon site. Now about Clara's theme. If this title doesn't ring a bell, then that's supposed to. Because this is actually an unreleased Tommy Emanuel song. You won't find it on any of his albums and there's only two videos of him playing this song on YouTube. So. You're very early to the party concerning this song. Now, I found this song uh, while looking for new material and I bumped upon the uh, Tommy Emanuel plays the Gretsch Chet Atkins Dark Eyes guitar. Uh, this is a little video where Tommy is playing a vintage Gretsch guitar, which was once owned by Chet Atkins, and this is the song he plays. The second I, s I heard the song, I was taken by the melody, the chord progression, and what's probably important for you, this is one of Tommy's easiest songs. Mind you, it's still a Tommy Emanuel song, it's not really to be called easy, but this is really playable if you have some basic fingerstyle experience. One thing I have to add to the tutorial video, in the verse there is a dominant ninth flat 5 chord. It's a very difficult, not really difficult, but it's a very crowded chord. Lots of fingers on very little space. And the first time around I sort of breeze past it and I don't really pay that much attention to it. A bit later in the chapter I do offer a few alternatives, which makes this part of the song a lot easier to play. So don't drop the song right away when you see this chord or when you try to play it. Just check a little bit further in the chapter and you will see that there is actually quite an easy way to uh, switch out those chords for something else. Anyway, have fun with the tune. See you next time for more Tommy Emanuel stuff and take care. Bye bye. Okay, so let's get to playing. Now my main hope for this tutorial is to keep it under the 30 minute mark, at least the, the musical explanation of this. I've had my share of 50 minute plus tutorials uh, for the last few weeks and it's been a major workload. So I'm hoping to keep this one rather short. Now there's not really that much to explain. There is an intro, which is repeated a few times. There's a verse and a chorus. And even within the verse and the chorus, there's a lot of repetition. Let's have a quick look at the intro first. Let me play it one time for you. Nothing too difficult there. You're working around two different chords. An E chord centered around the fourth fret, a little bar across the fourth fret, ring finger on the sixth fret D string, middle finger on the fifth fret of the B string, and the pinky seventh fret on the high E string. You don't actually need the bar for the E chord, but you do need it for the next chord, which is an A minor ninth chord bar across the fifth fret. That's why I keep down the bar in the E chord as well. I just find it easier to move up and down the whole bar if you find it easier in the E chord. Just to use the uh, separate note on the fourth fret and then move to a bar chord each and every time, then by all means go ahead. The second chord, as I said, is an A minor ninth chord, but you're keeping the low E in the bass. So low, a ba low E bass note, seventh fret with the ring finger on the D string, a little bar across the G and the B string on the 5th fret, pinky is still on the high E string. The arpeggiating part is quite easy, Tommy changes it slightly every time he plays it. One thing that is always present is the chord change is in front of the beat, so on the 2nd 8th note of the 4th beat, so you get 1, 2, 3, 4, change, 
change one, two, three, four, change one, two, three, four, change one, two, three, four. There you go, that's the intro. So I wish all of Tommy's intros were as simple as this. Let's have a look at the verse. I'm gonna play it through one time, then I'm gonna come back and explain. repeating the very first verse. Now, let's take a look at that starting from the very first bar. We're starting out with an E major ninth chord, quite a large chord shape. So you're starting out with an open E string, ring finger fourth fret on the D string, index finger first fret on the G string, and pinky fourth fret on the B string. Adding in an open E string at the top. And all of this has to ring out across the whole bar. If you find this difficult, because it is quite a large chord shape, then maybe try playing the song with the capo on the 2nd fret or 3rd fret, 4th fret. I'm convinced that the tune actually sounds great even when using a capo at the 2nd fret or 3rd fret or 4th fret, but it will make that really big E chord a lot easier to play. So if you find this very hard, slap on a capo 2nd fret and see if that makes it easier for you. The rhythm, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something really specific. You get two eight notes on the first beat and then a triplet on the second beat, which makes for a bit of a really dreamy uh, vibe when going into the song. One, two, three. So, bum, bum, da, 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 dum. Make sure you get that down really well because it really sets up the mood for the whole song. Then we're moving to a C sharp minor 11th chord. Middle finger on the 4th fret on the A string, ring finger 4th fret on the G string, pinky 4th fret on the B string, and the index finger 2nd fret on the high E string. Now we're hammering on with that index finger. And right away, we're doing one of those really quick embellishment pull-offs, very typical for Tommy Emmanuel. So as soon as you play that top note, the second fret again, pull off as soon as you hear the note. Let's couple that together with the first chord, with the E major ninth. For the chord change, you're, going, you're coming down from that E major ninth chord, the pinky is already where it should be, so just move over the ring finger to the 4th fret on the G string, middle finger on the 4th fret of the A string, and then the index finger has to jump over to the 2nd fret. So you can make this switch as small as possible. No extra movement when it isn't needed. Going to an F sharp minor 7th chord, just a straight bar across the 2nd fret. You could add in C sharp on the A string, but there's not really a need for that. I just play a full bar across the 2nd fret. To B dominant 7th sus4 with a bit of a strange fingering, middle finger, index finger, ring finger. You would expect this like a regular A chord shape index finger, middle finger, ring finger. But if you play it like this, with the middle finger on top and the uh, index finger buried underneath, it's actually easier to make the next transition to a B dominant seventh chord without a sus4 anymore. Let me play those two chords back to back. Two first bars. third bar is exactly the same as the first bar. And 
Then we're moving over to an A chord, 5th fret. With an open B string. Really soft percussive hit on, on those strings, don't overdo it. This is a difficult chord. Now, Tommy actually plays it like this on the recording, which is an A major 13 sharp 9 chord. Really uh, colorful chord. But I noticed that he actually seldom plays the C sharp on the 4th fret. Now, if you leave out that C sharp on the 4th fret, then this chord becomes a whole lot easier when you use the thumb over the side of the neck and you get thumb on the 5th fret, index finger 4th fret on the D string, middle finger, uh, sorry, uh, ring finger and pinky on the 5th fret on the G and B string, and the middle finger on top 4th fret on the high E string. What's even more, if you don't want to use the thumb over the side of the neck, if you lose the C sharp up here, you can actually just play an open string as well. So if you want to, you can play the whole chord shape. But I actually think that the, the song isn't really less because you remove this one single note. Tommy would probably disagree. He put it in there for a reason. But I think this is a, a very hard chord shape uh, with very little extra benefit. Uh, you can use the open chord, uh, the open bass note or the thumb over the side of the neck and it just flows a little busy, bit easier for me at least. Two, G sharp minor seven, yet again, this time full bar across the fourth fret and pinky on the seventh fret. And then to almost the same chord shape as we just saw, fourth fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, fifth fret, but this time with a D bass note. And so this becomes a D ninth flat nine, a D ninth flat five chord. Again, not an easy chord shape. A lot of fingers pressed together on very little space. This will take some time to get into your fingers. Sliding up from the 5th fret with a pinky to the 7th fret and then we're on a G chord. People who've played since we met will recognize this chord shape. Quite a large chord going from the 7th fret to the 3rd fret but there's nothing to play in between. So. That moves by quite quickly. You push the melody note in front of the beat and you land with the bass note and two open strings on the beat. One, two, three, four, one. That's where those open strings and the bass note lands. And you move down with the pinky to the fifth fret, then the middle finger to the third fret. This chord shape will, should look familiar. It's the exact same thing as you just played on the fifth fret from D ninth flat five to C ninth flat five. The chord is a bit easier down here because the frets are a bit further apart. So. That sequence is, is passes by quite quickly. So. The thing you should uh, pay attention to is the bass note isn't landing on the beat this time. So we get. One, two, three, so three, four, and really quickly that sequence. So we get one and two and three, four. And that's a lot going on and halfway through the chord, 
lift up the bar so the open E string can ring out. To an F sharp minor seventh chord. With a really quick pull off to the third fret on top. To B dominant seventh flat ninth. Little bar across the fourth fret, adding in the middle finger and the ring finger on the second fret on the A and the G string, removing the bar to an open B string, and you have the full verse in your fingers. Now those two uh, ninth flat five chords, they will take some time. They're not easy to play with a little bar across and then adding in the, the ring finger and the pinky. As you can see, it's a very crowded chord, lots of lots of fingers on, on a very small space that hang in there. It will work out in the end. If you find it too hard, then leave out the middle note, then just play, which is a possibility as well. Now I'm just leaving out the bar and I'm only playing the top note, which is usually the melody note. That's why you can't leave out this one, but you can't leave out this one. So. It was a quick take with both uh, dominant ninth flat five chords without the bar. Without the bar. You have to change around the rest of the arpeggiating, arpeggiating part just a little bit, but it can be played without the bar. Now that was the full verse. Let me play it one time really slowly. Then I'm going to go into the second verse and explain one thing extra because I have left out one major variation and I'm going to explain to you in a second just why. First, the very first verse. a repeat of the first verse. Now I have left one thing out of the first verse. Tommy sometimes, or actually quite a lot of times, plays a variation on that open uh, starting chord, on that E major ninth chord. Now the reason I didn't include it in the very first verse is because this can be quite a daunting chord. It's a huge chord shape. Uh, I have large hands and I have struggled a while to get this into my fingers. And that's why I didn't want to include it in the very first verse. Because by now you have heard that the song actually sounds fine without that chord variation in it. Now for those of you who want to spice up this easier song in terms of Tommy Emmanuel songs, easier song with a bit of a challenge, then I present to you with Tommy's uh, full E major ninth chord. It's the same chord shape, but he's adding in with the middle finger the second fret on the A string. And the whole chord has to sound or has to ring out. So this is a huge chord shape. So what you do is I usually drop down the chord shape just a little bit sideways to reach in for that uh, second fret. And what you get is open string, second fret, fourth fret, first fret, fourth fret, open string. Ouch, this is one painful chord. Now, how does it work? Tommy usually plays the first chord as we saw in uh, the first verse. Basic chord. See, so that, that's what happens. It's by, it passes by so quickly, yet it is very, very difficult for the left hand to play. One more time. The first chord shape. Variation. 
everything else is exactly the same. Going into the chorus. As you can see, the chorus features one chord shape that is repeated quite a lot. We're working around a C chord, oh, starting out with nothing but the C bass note, playing the G string, uh, sorry, the D string and the B string open, completing the C chord. Moving to the third fret with the middle finger and the fourth fret with the ring finger. Adding in the C bass note again, so the bass note on the first beat and the third beat, and then everything else is just those sixth. That's the melody with the bass note underneath. sure that if you play that last chord that everything rings out. Third fret, fourth fret, third fret and then the open G and, B, G and E string in between them. Adding in the bass notes and the two open strings. When I play those two open strings everything else just keeps ringing out. Third fret and back. Last time the rhythm changes, so most of the time Tommy plays this. Ta -da. So those last two notes are pushed back just a little bit, but he changes it around as well. Now every single time he plays it, the last time he changes it to straight eight notes. First time. Time. Third time, straight eight notes. Second fret, second fret with the uh, index finger and middle finger on the G and E string to an open low E string. Moving to yet another sixth, third fret, fourth fret still on the G and E string with the middle finger and the ring finger. To a D chord, you might recognize this from the opening chord shape of the intro. Now with the bar all across the second fret, just so we can play this low F sharp bass note, which gives you a D chord with an F sharp in the bass. time around is exactly the same thing. Now the thing is changed but now you can start playing around with the rhythm of those last two melody notes. 16, 8 notes, 8 notes, completely the same thing moving to the fourth fret back into the intro. See, it works beautifully together. By now you have everything you need to play this whole song. There's just one little variation all the way at the end. I'm gonna play through the chorus one more time really slowly and then we're gonna go over the rest of the song.
So here we go, the intro, uh, let's say uh, starting from the bar before that. Is the only time Tommy actually changes it we're basically going back into the intro but Tommy is speeding up the arpeggios instead of playing eighth notes we're going to switch to 16 notes we're starting out in eighth notes but then little trick make sure to explain you that but first the intro so the outro sorry so basically Tommy is starting out with eight notes and then doubling then doubling up on the tempo the picking pattern Tommy does this a bit freer than than most classically trained guitarists would do so I would suggest using the classical technique of playing each note on the high E string with the ring finger, each note on the B string with the middle finger and each note on the G string with the index finger. Let me do that just one time really slowly, so the picking pattern. Make sure to keep it nice and even, nice and loose once you start speeding it up. Now for the melody of the very last bar, removing the pinky, stretching a bit to the ninth fret to get that G sharp. Maybe for a lot of people it can be easier to play this with the middle finger on the seventh fret instead of the ring finger. So you get. Then you, if you choose that option, then you have to play this probably with a hammer-on and a pull-off. If you play with this option, with the quick Tommy Emmanuel slide as seen in Angelina and a lot of other songs, open E string, and then the arpeggio of the E added ninth chord. 
if you're a nervous person, you can close it down here. Just a full uh, sounding chord. If you want to go full Tommy Emmanuel and use that little uh, harmonic at the end, I'm going to have to change the cameras around to show you this decently, but you're pulling down, you're putting down, sorry, the E major ninth chord. And then you're trying to use the side of the palm of your hand 12 frets higher than the B string. So you're aiming for the 14th fret. Then you are going to strum the strings going with the, the side of the hand in a diagonal way. So you're going to aim from the 14th fret to the 12th fret on the high E string. So you're basically going to be moving the hand in that position. So in that way, straight down in a diagonal way from the 14th fret to the 12th fret. Then keep your thumb in a, a solid way. So don't try to pick anything. You're just keeping the thumb in one position. And if you do that right, you can practice it on the 12th fret. You can just strum down. And the, the technique is this side touches the note at the 12th fret and the thumb actually hits the harmonic. So if you do that without fingering any chord, So try that first before trying this uh, inside the chord. The pinky on the fourth fret, there is no use in trying to get that, that, that fret, that 16th fret uh, in there. So either you just skip it and this string will always sound dead if you try to sound out the harmonic or you just leave out the pinky and go for a full E chord. It's a very light and delicate technique. There is no force here. There's no strength. It's, it's all very loose and very delicate. First try to get that harmonic like this by using the side of the hand and striking the string with the thumb and then try it with the E chord shape and outline it in a diagonal way. This is where the thumb pick comes in as an extra uh, help. This actually is a bit easier if you use a thumb pick, but I think the, whole, the rest of the song is harder to play with a thumb pick. So it's up to you. Either you play it completely with a thumb pick just for this, or you try to ma make it sound out without a thumb pick. One more time the outro, really slowly. If you want to go for the open chord or if you want to go for the harmonic. So there you go, a few difficult jazzy chords, especially that dominant ninth flat five in the beginning is really hard, but after that things will actually get easy, easier quite a lot when I say easy in these Tommy Emmanuel tutorials. It's always in the back of my mind with it's easy for being a Tommy Emmanuel song. But I hope you give this one a shot. It's an unknown Tommy Emmanuel song. There's not a lot of people who know this song. It hasn't been released yet. Uh, and you can impress your friends or uh, some love interest by playing this as a, as a romantic ballad. Anyway, have fun with the tune. See you next time for another Tommy Emmanuel tutorial. Bye bye.